But um, how do you actually think about coming up with this type of software at that time? Because at that time it was more about uh, creating more durable uh, scooters, which also happens with the swappable batteries and so on. But your team decided not to focus on uh, the, the hardware uh, and the software was kind of like all the, the same, right? It was all white label software and so on. But you, st you, you looked at it in a different way in terms of software by uh, using... Uh, I don't know, like vision and, and stuff like that. I think you also yeah, have like so, so we just got, I think if you, you know, if you look at the, uh, if you look at, uh, you know, start a business uh, guides or a 101, or, you know, if you read some of the blog posts or watch stuff on YouTube, it always says focus on the, on the problem. Uh, so for us, the first problem was, well, the scooters are going too quickly on the sidewalk. It's dangerous, right? So, so that's the problem. So how do we fix that? Uh, the, what we thought was the first solution was very high position, high accurate uh, positioning, right? That we could know exactly where the scooter was. And we worked on that for about six months. And uh, whilst we got kind of promising results in our trials, uh, we realized it was going to fail because you run out of signal, the mapping uh, challenge is too high. So, so we kind of quickly realized that high accuracy positioning wouldn't fix the... Uh, the scooter, uh, sidewalk riding, and, and pedestrian detection challenges. So we had also been working on vision, and that was part of our our, um, our roadmap. And then we said, okay, this is going to be the the, uh, the the main way to go. And and really, that's what we found is is with a camera system, you can you can offer the full and complete uh, solution. You can get it right. You can it can work when you have no signal. It can work in all kinds of conditions. It can work in any city. Uh, yep. We've been testing all over the world now, and uh, yeah, we're getting pretty pretty good results. Very very high accuracy numbers um, yep. everywhere we go. Um, actually, with uh, with the solution that you provide, you, you kind of like have to work with uh, not only the operators, but I think also have to be in discussions with the city because you need to, I guess, adjust to what the city wants. Like you mentioned at the beginning, you were kind of like looking at okay, what will the city uh, require uh, later on with regulations and so on. So you you were kind of like anticipating um, what the policies could be. So I guess you're also in discussions with cities uh, and I guess yeah. also with, with hardware providers because you need to have um, access to their hardware to be able to implement your, your solution, right? So you actually have to collaborate with the three main, uh, main players. Yeah, so, so really it's, a, it's an ecosystem. So, so you know, we, we see ourselves as almost trying to partner with, uh, with everybody. Uh, so we have the operators, right? The, uh, you know, the companies that put the scooters on the street, we see them probably as our, uh, you know, if we said who's our customer, but you're right, we, we completely have to um, work with the city. You know, I guess in the early stages and, and where we are, we have to let them know that the technology is available, what it can do, um, you know, how it works, all of those things. Um, so, so, so we do that. Uh, we have to collaborate with the vehicle manufacturers, which, which we do. Um, and then also a very, very important uh, person to consider is, is the rider on the, on the scooters, right? Because, um, yeah, we want them to enjoy the experience. We don't want to uh, reduce the rider experience in any way by, by putting this safety technology on. So, so all of those uh, things are in our mind as we... Yeah kind of go forward, we develop our technology and, and, uh, and, and try to, um, to, to find a way. Really what we see is this, this huge potential for uh, shared micromobility because, um, you know, we've had, we've had a huge wave of, uh, of VC-led growth, uh, you know, up until this point. The economic conditions are tougher now, so, so we're, it's going to be harder for people to get a huge investment. Um, so we really need to collaborate right through the industry. We need the city to collaborate uh, with us as well. That'll be an interesting thing to talk about in, in Paris in a second. But we all need to kind of work and go forward together to find the solutions that can unlock growth in a way that makes sense for everybody, right? That it's profitable and that, that it gives a good service. Yeah, uh, correct, correct. Um, now, if you look at the, um, some challenges that our industry has been facing, uh, some of the main uh, discussed challenges uh, around this time are um, the parking issues, which is a big, big discussion in Brussels, for example. Uh, but I assume in Paris it is also a big discussion. Um, 
um, riding e steps on um, not on the on the road or riding them uh, dangerously on on pedestrian um, areas. Um, I guess this is where your solution comes in as a company. Can you explain a little bit, um, maybe in less technical terms, because we do have some, uh, you know, uh, government officials uh, listening to the podcast as well, uh, what your company and what your solution could could mean for for these type of challenges that are being faced in Brussels and in Paris when it comes to the parking issues, um, accidents, uh, people riding, riding with two or three people on e-scooters. Actually, today on the news in Belgium, I saw a video clip of five people riding one okay. e-scooter. <laughs> so these That's are not really... Easy. Uh, that must have been small people, but... <laughs> <laughs> they, they, were, they were actually like circus, circus people, and it was, oh, okay, uh, okay. I guess, for like a, a promo yeah, no, or something. That's not easy, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, well, let, let me let me talk about what we do. Really, our, our uh, core capability is around computer vision, AI, machine vision. All, all of those names get 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 uh, get used, and then we do really two things. Um, the first one, and probably the one that we're most famous for, is putting a camera onto the scooter, and then that camera can detect. Uh, a few different things. It can detect the road surface that the that the vehicle is on. So is it on the sidewalk, on the bike lane, or on the road? Uh, we also detect pedestrians. So if we're in a busy pedestrian area or there's a risk of a collision, we can detect that and and, and highlight it. So we use that on on the uh, on the camera, and um, that technology is now becoming quite mature and working really really well. We're getting, as I said, very very good results all all over the uh, all over the world. The second uh, solution that we offer um, in, in the shared micromobility space is the um, is, is parking technology. So everybody who's who's used the scooter is familiar with the end of ride photo or, or the end of ride selfie that, that that we call it. We've been applying AI computer vision techniques onto those photos to help give better parking scores. So we can tell. Uh, for example, the most the, the most basic example is, hey, is there is there a scooter in this photo at all? Right? Maybe somebody took a picture of their foot or something because they thought nobody will look at it. So so that's the most basic level. But then we can go right through uh, the the sophistication and we can tell, okay, well, is there is there is this a scooter that our company owns in in the picture? Is there many scooters? Um, if it's a case where we have designated parking, is it within the the painted lines? Uh, is, it, is it on the sidewalk? Is it blocking yellow lines? We can detect things like uh, manholes, we can detect doors, we can detect walls. And then we use all of those elements to, to generate a parking score and then to nudge riders and operators towards, uh, towards better parking outcomes. So, so the technology really is, is there to, uh, to fix these problems. And um, yeah, I think, again, it's, it's about collaborating, right? I think in, exactly. in, uh, in, in, in Belgium and, and, and Brussels, um, what I would love to see there is more designated parking. I feel like there's, there's, there's not enough. And uh, my understanding of the, of, of the market, which is, which is uh, quite remote, but is, is that there's a number of different uh, kind of regions or areas in the city, and it makes it difficult for everybody to agree and have a uniform uh, system. Yeah. That's not that uncommon, <laughs> right? That's it's probably the same all over Europe, all over the world that, that that you have these things. So, so that's really one of the challenges that the industry has to overcome is is these vehicles go right through the city, and um, yeah, the users don't don't uh, don't understand that. One hundred yeah. meters this way, I'm in I'm in one municipality, and hundred meters that way, I'm in another. We need kind of uniformity across the cities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, indeed, and 